All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do all the export between Blender and Unreal and cover most of the trick I find over time. So I hope you're going to like it. So uh, basically, those stuff was more of a bunch of notes for me and information I want to use personally. But I thought maybe some people will be interested to know how those things work. So you have an example of a finished mushroom moving around here and all the step all the exploration and different uh, potential uh, things we can face during the export between Blender and Unreal. So there's many sections, so you can st you don't have to watch the whole video because it's pretty long and I'm not very fast or very efficient to explain. But again, it's more notes for myself, but hope you can enjoy it. All right, so let's start that. So we're going to use Blender 2.93.1 at the moment of recording this. OK, first thing, delete the cube. There we go. Now we're going to create, I like to do, uh, let's do a mushroom. Yeah, let's go for that mushroom. We're going to use very simple way to do that using simple curve. Uh, I'm going to move this aside, uh, maybe adding a, a modifier, a screw modifier like this on X, increase a little bit the resolution. And then we're going to start playing with the root of the mushroom. As you can see, now we can create kind of a funny shape. OK, now let's let's add another curve. Uh, and this time we're going to work on again. We're going to just flip this 90 degree into Y and we're going to do we're going to do the head of the mushroom. Increase a little bit just to have a better resolution. Ta -da! We got our mushroom. OK, so the, f the thing we're going to do is just to join Control G. So we make one mesh and we're going to call this the shroom. And export that on the FBX and the shroom and you give it a name. It's going to be called shroom shroom one because we're going to do a couple of them. So. I'm going to purposely leave most of the setup by default. So we're going to see what's wrong in uh, Unreal Engine and we're going to fix that. Speaking of, of it, uh, let's start Real Engine, Early Access 5. We're going to use first person shooter. That's kind of cool. We're going to call the project name Shroom Blender. Create that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder to work. We're going to call this the shroom folder. Let's start to import our first mushroom. And that's we just import the FBX. Open it. And again, we're going to leave everything by default and see what's happened. Import all. And boom, we get the first very common mistake. No smoothing group information was found in the FBX scene. How do we fix this? Super simple. Let's close that. Delete this guy because he's not good. Uh, and we're just going to fix this by when we do the export, we have to choose in the geometry the smoothing using face instead and then do the export again. Export, we override the number one. That's not a big deal. Import and now the error will be gone. There we go. Let's do this. Import all. Boom. The error, it's fine. But we, we're going to have phase two new things. So if I drag this room in my scene, you're going to notice a first thing. One thing is really weird. It's like it's a transparent mushroom. So how do we, uh, how do we fix that transparency? Very simple. We have to do is we take the object and convert that object to a mesh. Really important. The other thing we're going to do now is we're going to go in edit mode and then we can see all the vertices of our mesh. And we're going to activate the normal view like this and we're going to turn it like to one. Just as you can see all those blue lines are kind of inside. So that's the problem. So very simple way to fix that. You select your object and you go to mesh normal and you do a flip. Ta -da! And now your normal are all going outside. So perfect. So let's let's do an export with this FBX. So we're going to call this number two like that export import number two open import all. And there we go. Our mesh now it's look more normal. Let's create a material and or shroom one like this. We try to apply the material on this guy it doesn't work. But if we apply it on this guy, it works. All right. So this second bug is now fixed. 
third bug. Now, if we look at this guy, it's kind of weird that if we apply rotation, it's going to rotate but it's not necessarily from the right spot you know the the axis it's not at the right space so easy way to fix that you go there let's remove those guys we don't want to see this put us on the side view number one and let's grab g and z and let's move this a little bit grab z let's move this a little bit up that's it and now do export fbx and now we're going to call this shroom number three export and import shroom number three open import all shroom number three you can see now so my guy is now having his axis at the base so if we put the so this guy is axis is here and this guy is axis is here so very convenient so that's the first step Okay, so I think we can say this mushroom is the good, so let's do a bit of a cleanup right now. Okay, now we're gonna work with the, the material. Uh, it's not really a bug, but it's something take me a little bit times to figure out. Uh, so what I would like to have now is to have two different material, one for the head and one for, for the base of the mushroom. Unfortunately, right now, as you can see, there's only one material slot available for that. So let's do this in Blender create a new material head like that and we're gonna just put it a nice uh, reddish color like this be sure to be on the edit mode Control l so the head is all selected so typically you select the group of uh, mesh you want to associate to a specific material you assign it and then we're gonna do the same stuff for the other one so we're gonna add another we're gonna name it the buddy like that buddy and this guy, we're just going to leave it uh, white. That's going to be perfect. So control L like this. And we just got an assess assign this. Ta -da! So we have our two material associated in Blender. We can export this FBX. And we're going to call this, of course, Mushroom 4 because it's the fourth one. Export, leave it as is. And we're going to import now the Mushroom number 4. The thing you have to be sure is to look at the material import method and create new material be sure this is selected import all and now as you can see we have the body and the head material be selected we can put now our new mushroom next to the other one and this guy has two material slot and they are perfectly created so they have a default color it's all clean this is the trick for the material Okay, now we're going to explore another really important aspect with Blender and Unreal Engine is the UV. Uh, UV is uh, the information that display all, all your texture are being displayed on your on your mesh. See how this thing really impact the look of the mesh. So I'm going to modify the, the material. I'm going to add a texture sample so we can have a better ID. Uh, let's change this to put something like a pebble. So I'm going to replace the red color with those guys so basically my material must be look like those little pebbles so that's what i'm expecting happen to my mushroom but unfortunately when we look at it it doesn't look like right at all so you can see here it's it's weirdly distributed and that reason for the reason for that is my uv was not uh, properly unwrapped so let's 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 do this here so there's a very nice um, editing mode for the uv on blend and blender so you put this like that select all and then we can see what's what's the issue here so my mesh was created with the with curve and it doesn't really fit the, the the space for for the uv so let's unwrap this better in a better way so there's different techniques so you can unwrap this like just using unwrap and it's create kind of a funny shape like that or uh, one thing you can use a projection view with bounds like this which is not bad i mean if i go up like this and i do the same stuff uh, projection from view with bounds it's it's interesting but i mean the the real way to do that is to simply use steam and put this on uh, edit edge select loop edge loop and then you right click this and then you say you you do a mark steam you do the same with the other part of the mesh select loop like this and mark steam so basically now you cut your mushroom somehow so and we're gonna do a uv unwrap uv unwrap 
And then you can see now there's a kind of a more interesting way to distribute your UV map. So now let's let's do an export FBX. We're going to call this mushroom five. So now we're going to import, open this, import all. So automatically, as you can see, Unreal Engine captured the previous material and just now fix automatically the, the problem with the UV. So we have a better UV mapping right here. OK, now I would like to push a little bit more the material aspect from the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another texture sample. It's going to be the same. Uh, I'm going to use the same pebbles than the other one so we can see a little bit of uh, evolution between those. So I'm putting this. I'm going to change the color just to help us to see the difference. Multiply that. So just gonna, it's a quick and dirty uh, for the base. So now you can you can have a little bit view of so the mushroom, the base have also another texture. So what about I would like to have a different UV and a different tiling for the wool mesh, the head versus the body. So one way to do that will be to create two different UV inside of my own mesh. So right now, if I look at the UV map, I only have one UV map index. So I'm going to add another one. I'm going to call this base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my base here and I'm going to scale it to full fit the space of the UV. So now if I look at this one, I'm going to take this one though for the top grab. I'm just going to move it aside like this. So this UV map now. So now this UV map is mostly concentrated with the base and I'm going to do similar stuff, but with the, the head instead quick. So now I have two UV map. So what's going to happen? So I'm going to export that again for Unreal Engine. So I'm going to use now number six. So it's going to be a new mushroom import my number six. And I'm just going to put it next to it. Right away, we can see there's a difference because I kind of fix the hedge here. So it's less apparent. But I'm, I'm, I'm working now with a mesh that have two UV channels. So let's see this in more detail. So if I look at it, I can see now there's a UV channel zero, which is the one I was just created and UV channel one. That's the one. And there's also UV channel two, which is it's man mostly managed by Unreal Engine to distribute the light on your mesh, but that doesn't matter here. So what I'm going to do now with this information is I can change the coordinate specifically for that material. All I can do this, I'm going to use a coordinate. I'm going to use a texture coordinate like this. I'm going to create two parameters. Call this one V tiling. Put number one, another one, U tiling. Append those guys together. And then multiply this with my coordinate here. Plug this to my UV. Save that. And it's always better to use an instance of a material. So create instance and change this for body instance. Now I can go here. And of course, I can do tiling and color change. So I can change the tiling of my mesh here. But you may notice it's it's kind of similar to this one. So just to increase the resolution of that, I'm going to my body here and I'm going to use the channel which is associated to my new UV. So there's a coordinate here. So this one will correspond to zero right now. Close that and let's check our shroom six. UV channel zero. So that's the one. So basically, this is not the, the channel I want to work with. I want to work with this channel, which is typically made for body mushroom. So let's go fix that. Going here, I'm going to press one. So I changed my channel now, save. And now it's become more more customized for the base of my mushroom. As you can see, I can I can play again with tiling for sure. So I can put this back to zero, but it's a completely different resolution. So it's a different UV map, which just can be really useful if you design your mesh with different texture or different uh, UV in mind. So let's take advantage of those UV map and we're going to create a better texture and a better look for a mushroom than what we are right now. Because to be honest, this is this is pretty ugly. So let's try to create something a little bit more uh, mushroomy. So uh, important thing is you have to select the right uh, UV map for your painting. So I'm going to do this like that. So I'm going to start with the end. 
like this. Um, I'm picking this and I'm going to go to my head and I'm going to create a section here where I can see my shade editor like that. And I'm going to add an image texture like this. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this head texture. Be sure you, you're creating different naming convention because it can create some issue with the Unreal if you use always the, the same the same the same naming convention. So here multiply by two this guy as well. I'm going to put it by default uh, red. So let's move this. We're going to create a reddish like uh, this, like this color. There we go. So now we have our texture just appear right there. So we connect the color with the base color here and we should now having our mushroom ready. There we go. So our mushroom now, head of the mushroom is red. Let's start painting this for a better look. So go to texture paint. I'm going to create like little uh, white dot on my mushroom like the magic mushroom everybody knows. So let's save this image now. If you click here, you see there's a little asterisk. Save as, head texture, just save that image. So eventually Unreal will be able to export that, import that, sorry. Uh, now let's do the body the body part and be sure you always work with the right UV. So I'm just going to switch to this UV guy now. I'm going to create same a new texture, image texture like that. I'm going to create this. It's going to be body, body texture. Put it more white like that. Okay, there we go. So it looks, it's a little bit funny because in, in Blender, I didn't find the best way to swipe between V and maps and stuff like that. So anyway, so it kind of confusing. It can be confusing for the 3D artist, but uh, let's, let's try to work with this way instead. And then we're going back to here, buddy. So we're going to put like new texture. So I'm going to put like more uh, brownish like that. All right, I'm just going to reduce the spread like this. All right, so now if I switch to head like this, so we can see the head and now we can see the body. Now our body is being created. So let's save that image. It's really important if we want to have Unreal Engine to get the image. Let's do this. And the other thing you have to be careful is to rename your uh, material because if you don't, looks what's going to happen. So let's do an export like this and put this inside of Unreal Engine 7. Open. So even if you look for material, uh, create new mesh, create new instance and import texture, you click that. It will not work. It will kind of automatically associate to the previous texture we had in place. So let's delete this. And now let's fix this by just naming the material seven here, the body seven. There we go. So be sure you save your texture uh, where you want it to be. Um, like I'm going to save my texture here. Let's go to the other guy head. Save as I'm going to save it. I don't want to say I want to save it on the right project here at texture save as. So now I'm sure my two texture are in the same folder and I'm going to import everything. So let's do this Import FBX export like that. Now let's do an import. Open import all. There we go. So in order to this thing works, be sure you have imported your texture, you have saved your texture and it's imported properly. So let's now drag and drop this guy here. There we go. So first thing you may notice is the head seems to be fine, but the body is not. So let's fix the body texture, body texture. Where's the body texture? Here we go. Double click on that. It's simply because I don't direct this to the right coordinate. So texture coordinate. So I'm going to plug this. So as you remember, if I look at my mushroom here, 
that the UV I'm looking for is, so that's the UV channel one for zero for the head and that's the UV channel one, which is the body. So this is what I want to fix. So I'm going to put here number one and then I'm going to change my texture to the right place. And there we go. Now I have my mushroom completed with this new texture, which is look a little bit nicer, look more like a real mushroom, but there's some stuff we can improve more. Okay, now we're gonna try to make something a little bit more complicated. Um, let's take the example of that mushroom. I'm gonna replace the texture with the, the pebbles material like that. And as you can see right now, there's kind of a kind of a shape to it, which is a reflection. So it's made mostly done by using, as we're gonna see here, it's using what we call normals. So uh, so they use a normal, which is a kind of a special texture baked using high detail shape and it's applying on, on the object. So we're gonna try to do this for our mushroom here. So let's go back to Blender. Uh, I already prepare another mushroom, which is I call here I shroom, which is a high resolution mushroom. So it's basically the same mushroom, but high resolution. Let's compare that X like that. So I'm just gonna put them side by side. So now you see this mushroom have a little bump, bump and stuff like that. So if we look at the mesh itself, this guy have way more resolution. So thing I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna add a little bit more texture to it. So going in the sculpt mode. So that's the way I did that. So I just copy this one and I increase this using the, mat the add modifier uh, subdivision surface. So I'm gonna work now on the base. So in order to change that, I'm gonna go in sculpt mode and I'm gonna trace like a little shape like this. All right, so I just had a bunch of lines and details. So we're gonna be able to see maybe something more interesting inside of Unreal. And now we're gonna do the baking process. So basically baking process means we're gonna generate a normal map. We're gonna take all the resolution of that high polygon and put it on the smaller polygon. So in order to do that, we have to pick and organize a bit the material of the smaller polygon. So let's go on the small one here. And we can add a first node, which is a normal node to create a normal, uh, sorry, a normal map. So we're gonna create a normal map like this and we're gonna hook it to normal like this. But to feed that normal map, we need an image. So we get to generate another texture image texture, image texture, sorry, like this. And then we're gonna create a new one, the head texture, normal head texture. That's the one I already created. And really important here is to, because by default, when you create an image, it says to color space RGB, which is not what you want. You use this when you wanna do stuff like we did previously, but now we wanna create a normal. So that's a non-color color texture. And we're gonna just hook that right here like that. Okay, so the material is now set to be baked. So we're gonna go now in the properties, uh, render properties. A baking process happen only on cycle render. So we have to pick the render. The baking type we're gonna do is a normal baking type like this. And one thing really important to change specifically for Unreal Engine is the swizzles. Uh, the, it's a negative Y. So why uh, why is that? It's probably, there's something that I read, it's probably because uh, Unreal Engine versus uh, Blender, some use OpenGL and the other one use DirectX and they have different uh, convention for that part. So that's okay. Uh, the other one is you have to select to active. And then we're gonna create by default those value because I played with it before and those value at zero. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix the extrusion and the max ray distance. And one way to find that, uh, it's this part is can be an iterative part, but just to save you time, I already ma make a measurement here. You take a measurement rule and you go on the side like this and you just try to figure out what's the height of it. So here we have 0.29, here we have, 0.5 so you look around your mesh and try to find some some very high level so 0 0.4 0 0.5 so I think 0 0.5 as an extrusion will be a right uh, option and the max ray distance it's a parameters also you have to play it's the way the, the projection is happening so so we're gonna create like like that so the very tricky part is to start the baking so the baking must start from the eye polygon and then you click to the smaller one like this. So I click 
this one control and press right click mouse that's a one way to do this or you just be sure you select you see now I, I switch between ice room and shroom so I select the ice room and press shift and now I, I click again on my mushroom and the, the shroom is selected so that's mean the baking will apply from the ice room to the smaller shroom so let's do this now let's start the baking so the first pass give us no result and and that's typically what happening is specifically when we have multiple uv we have to be careful with the uv mapping so because we generate two uv we need to change that and be sure we're looking at the right one and in my case i was looking at the the uv map base for the base of the mushroom like this part so we need to go there and select this guy instead and just to reinforce that for the export, I'm gonna select the UV map and force the vector here like this. So now I'm really sure I have my baking happen to the right place. So let's do this again. Be sure the high shroom is selected and going to the shroom bake. There we go. So we get almost ready or mapping. This area indicate kind of a, it's a bit maybe because my UV is a bit too stretchy. It's hard for the mapping, but we don't care. I mean, nobody's going to really look in this area, so that's fine. So we can consider the, the normal done for the head of the mushroom. Now let's do this for the body. Let's select the body seven, which is the one for the mushroom. Now we're going to do same thing. We're going to add normal map like this. I'm going to hook this normal map nodes to the material here and then we're going to create another texture image texture like this this time i'm going to create a new one i'm going to call it body normal texture really important color space select none color that's a common error apparently and we just hook that here and then we're going to use just to force the whole thing uv i'm gonna force the uv map like we do in unreal uv map so this guy it's the base like this i'm gonna hook my uv map here hook my uv map there like this so both uv map are supposed to be mapped at the right place and now just to be sure everything is fine i'm going to use now the base i'm going to visualize this guy like this so now again same principle i select the high mushroom and then the targeted mushroom is selected i'm going now on my render scene and i've checked everything's fine i'm going to do a bake all right so i have a nice normal map being created so now I have to save both of those guys. I'm gonna save this in the same folder. I do all my work, shroom here, body normal texture, save that guy. And I have to do the same with the body normal head texture. Save as, same space, same folder, there we go. Just before doing this export, I'm just gonna change something for be more uh, consistent with the mapping so i'm going to change the name body and head seven if i remove this guy i can see my mapping it's been there so now i just want to export i don't want to this guy i just want to export this guy so i'm going to do an export here fbx shroom 8 and i'm going to do select object only mesh other and be sure my smoothing is on face all right everything seems to be okay export now i'm going to go back i create my folder under shroom i create a folder shroom 8 import shroom 8 open so everything seems to be okay let's import that all right now this guy i have a lot of information so let's see if we can fill the mushroom right away so already we see, can start to see the detail on my mushroom i'm gonna have to fix my uh, body like this so as you can see my normal texture is being applied correctly my sample as well and now i'm gonna add a coordinate texture texture coordinate I'm going to pick number one because I know this is the one I want. I just modify the UV here. 
just to force the right UV to both of them. Save. There we go. And now I got a more detailed mushroom. There we go. So it's more, that's, there's way more detail. And that's a really interesting, it's a really interesting look now. And it doesn't cost that much in terms of uh, resolution and performance. So that's really interesting. Okay, in terms of comparison, let's do something a little bit more advanced and it's more specific to Unreal Engine 5. So we're going to export the heavy mushroom, which is this one here. We're going to hide this guy. And we're just going to do a file export FBX. And that's going to call number 8, but high res like this and I'm gonna go here I'm gonna create another subfolder high res I'm gonna call this like this import so already we can see this object is way bigger than the other one so that's massive difference but let's try to import this anyway. Import all. So you see now I have this mushroom, which I have uh, over uh, 3,000, 3, almost 400,000 uh, triangles, which is crazy. You don't want to don't want to play with something like that, especially for a game. If we compare this with this guy, he's only have 5,000, almost 6,000 uh, vertices. So but just for fun, we're going to import that. And of course, there's a high res mushroom right there. So is it better? Yeah, yeah it's interesting. I mean, it's 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 better in terms of uh, resolution, but in terms of of resource and draw calls and FPS, it's it's just a killer. So let's go. OK, but we don't we don't want to use such a big asset and or in our in our game. So let's let's delete this. We're going to import and stand a, a nanite version of that. So now we're going to click build nanite. So this is an important process during the import. So if we click import, so Unreal Engine now going to process the, uh, the mushroom and make it more efficient for the game. There we go. So the nanite has been built. So I can pull this out like this. So the first thing you can see is the triangle is only 2000, which is even less than this guy. I'm going to do a copy of this, copy of this, delete this. I'm going to delete this one too, like this. And we're going to remove this because we don't need that. Right. So we're going to do similar modification here. So there's no normal for this one, but there is a coordinate need to be adjust because the UV is on the channel number one again. So we're just going to change this like that. There we go. And we're going to use this new texture and going to apply this to this guy here. Whoops. Uh, the opposite way. This one is go there and this one is go there. There we go. So now we have our iRes mushroom. We don't need this, obviously, compared to the other one. So there's a little bit of a, of a difference here. But in terms of performance, performance wise, I think we playing with a nanite and it's way more efficient than the other one. So the effect is quite similar but i will even say that of course if you look on the side you will see the effect it doesn't play that much you know it's it's always like a kind of a an effect but here the nanite of course is way better but, so the thing is with nanite is unfortunately as you can see when we did the import 
you cannot do a skeleton mesh with the nanite. So if I just open, and then if I want to do a skeleton mesh, the nanite has got disabled. So nanite is only for static mesh. So this is something really important to understand. But anyway, that's interesting to see this guy is a really high res and this this guy it's also high res so they basically look look alike a little bit but they have different uh, different usage so this one will be this one will, will be able to animate it while this one have to stay static so if you're looking for very high detail static image i think you should go with nanite with unreal engine 5 otherwise you have to go with the old ways which is creating normal as we did in blender Okay, now I would like to push a little bit further the concept of the mushroom by adding some life in it by using skeleton mesh. So but we're gonna build a skeleton mesh with animation and see how the mushroom can react with this. So let's go to Blender. Uh, in Blender, we're gonna use the animation tab. We're gonna look at our mushroom on the side. So the first things to do is to avoid using the eye mesh mushroom because right now it's too high detail so it's not appropriate for an armature so we're going to pick the other one the small one which have way less vertices which is more appropriate for this kind of uh, work so let's start by adding an armature single bone then we're going to go here and show view display so we're going to show the name of the bones and also we're going to put it on the front so we're going to select the bone go in edit mode grab z and we're going to subdivide it uh, to four so we're gonna have five bones like that's perfect so now we're gonna pick we're gonna select the mesh then shift p shift click the on uh, the the bones and then control p to wait with automatic so this is the base to do so now what we're gonna check is how the weight paint is being distributed among the mesh so we can see the top bone zero one is quite nice number two two uh, there's a little bit of association with the root i want to remove that three four and zero so the way to do this is you go here edit mode so i'm gonna do a control l and i'm gonna remove this from bone one remove and bone two remove all right and then i'm gonna do the same with the cap and i'm gonna remove this from number three four and bone as a zero let's all right so now if we compare or whoops or with paint like this it's more distributed so the one i was worried was more bone three and bone two so that's all perfect they completely disassociated all right so now we have our proper bone structure so let's do an export and see how, how unreal can deal with this so so to do the export, important go in object mode, select the mushroom, and be sure you have the whole the whole thing selected. So like this. So I I just select the I just press the mushroom and sh and shift press the the armature. So I have the whole thing selected. Do an export FBX. So let's put this. And our shroom folder so i did some tests previously delete this we're going to use a new naming convention it's going to be number 11. let's do this and call it rig at the end now what do we want to do in terms of export so be sure you click select active the way i did that i select the, the two armature in the mesh i'm going to select armature and mesh also in term of geometry always put this face and for the armature we remove the add leaves bone because it adds more bones and it doesn't make any sense okay let's do an export and now let's go in unreal we're gonna create uh, we're gonna actually we're just gonna create a new folder we're gonna call this shroom rig go inside import there we go we import that one so when you start the importation it's really important to select mesh skeletal mesh and also to be sure there's no skeleton be selected if you have a case like that you just go back and do a clear so be sure you have nothing selected here and let's import that there we go so we're gonna fix right away our texture because i know we have previously done 
um, uh, a change with the UV. So we have a different UV coordinate. If you look a little bit previously in the video, so I'm just going to put this at number one. So then we have a, this, the right UV. All right, so that's just a detail. It's nothing related to the skeleton mesh itself. Now, when we did the import, three things have been created. So of course, all the material, but there was a skeleton mesh as we can bring it in our scene. And also there was a physical asset as well as a skeleton. So if we click on the physical asset, it brings us here. So we have one physical asset, which is uh, okay, but I don't think we're gonna use this. And also if we look at the skeleton, we have all our arborescence here. Some people said you have to put root, some other, but for me, it doesn't seem to be a big issue. But uh, the thing I want really to fix is the physical asset. So, uh, because I wanna use more the more detailed bones, because right now we just use one bone, the number one as a, as a physical asset. So let's fix that. So we're gonna delete this physical asset. And then we're gonna select the rig, the shroom rig and create physical asset and assign create like that. So I wanna create some, some capsule uh, and I wanna be sure I want Let's move this. Create body for all bones and visible collision by default. So no, I don't want to do this. I want to have collision. So all the bones aren't being created. So create asset. Then we get a first look of our bone, which is completely different than the other one. So we're going to adjust a little bit the bone zero. So I want to create kind of a platform to hold the mushroom stand out and put kind of a free um, free of physics the other bone so the, the the mushroom will jiggle a little bit so let's do this so we're going to rescale that so actually we, what we can do first let's do a box regenerate this and now let's shrink the box a little bit bring it down so we can look from the side just to be sure we have the right position and maybe just make it a little bit larger <clears throat> to make it look like a little platform like this, whoops, uh, let's go in the front like this, whoops, there we go. So now we have something more as a platform perspective, there we go. And then let's do a simulation. So you can see now my mushrooms start to jiggle and just fall completely. So let's fix this. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to remove gravity here and same for those two, those Actually, I'm all the bones I want to remove the gravity. So the mushroom will not be impacted by this. So let's remove simulation. So you see my my uh, my mushroom is there. All right. So let's try this for the scene. So here. So I'm going to start that. But if I do this, save selected. All right. So if I do this, so nothing happens with my mushroom. So what I have to do is to activate physics like this, and then it's going to start jiggle a little bit. Save selected. Now, you see, now if I, I start shooting at it, you can see that it's moving just a little bit. There we go. Like that. And its base stay, stay still. So that's kind of giving like a little bit of effect. So I can increase this effect by maybe putting some weight to the head, like maybe this guy, I'm just going to put like um, a weight of zero. So you have a little bit of weight. We'll see what's going to happen if we do that. I should have used simulate this faster, but let's see. Oh yeah. So now there's a weight and whoops. <laughs> So we can see this, this is not perfect. So it's, it's a try and error again here. So the, the base of the mushroom looks like a worm when entered to an apple or something like that. So anyway, so but let you give the idea here. So basically you have all the flexibility with your mushroom, but unfortunately I noticed Blender doesn't always bring the perfect physic assets. So sometimes you have to redo it or sometimes it works, but, uh, but sometimes it's not. So it's, that's about it for the physic asset. Okay, now we did a rig and make it as a beautiful skeleton mesh. Uh, we can go a bit further and make an animation. 
So this is gonna be one of the last step. Um, so to make an animation, very simple in Blender. So it's the, there's nothing special between Blender and Unreal Engine in terms of animation. So we're just gonna do something nice here. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna play with, uh, this is the thing I struggle the most with uh, Unreal and Blender, is to do animation with stretch. So for example, here, if I do an animation, I'm clicking on the bones and I do unpose it and I can rotate the bones and do kind of funny stuff like that like a twist or whatever. So this is this is something like it will work without any problem with Unreal. But if we had like uh, can add, add some constraint in this area, none of those will be exported to Unreal. So you have to go in a different way. So the only way really works in term of uh, re, uh, in terms of bone constraint, it's when you when you detach the bone, we're just going to reset that. So let's say I want to stretch the base here and put it up. So I'm going to select, I'm going to go in edit mode. So I'm going to do a detach. I'm going to detach this from the, the main bone here. Uh, the bone four will be detached from bone, uh, the, the default bone. So what I do, I go in parent, do a clear and do a disconnect bone. So it's really important that you keep the UR key of the bone. So I always have one bone as a root and none of none of them being at the same level. So I do this. So now what's happening if, if I go in pose mode, my bone being detached, I can grab and start stretching the mushroom. So I now I just discover there's something funny about that one. I wonder who's not attaching it. So let's go there. Let's go and wait to paint. So this guy all right nobody's really there we go so i just fixed something was in the way all right it was with bone three bone two bone zero there we go so let's go back object mode so this one is still attached uh now i can do like i can detach this guy to this from this guy so if i go back and edit mode like this i'm gonna detach this guy from that guy so we can have a better clear disconnect bone and this guy to this guy clear disconnect bone and i'm going to keep those two attached let's reset all those bone clear transform and so first thing to do is you select your default position so we're going to do a short animation it's going to be an animation of uh, 30 frames like that and so you select all and then press I. Mm. There we go. So I block all my location. Same to the end. I can do a copy or block my location like that. Perfect. Now, if I go in the middle, that's where I'm going to start grabbing stuff. There we go. So my bone will go from there. So there we go. Let's see how things goes. There we go. So we have a stretchy mushroom. Perfect. So now let's go in object mode. Let's go at zero, select this, select the armature, file, export, FBX. We're going to call this rig uh, anim like this. So for the animation, we just put everything we need, export FBX. And now let's import this new mushroom like that. We can have his own skeleton or the same and import. So animation length exported time. Let's go. Let's do this. There we go. So now we have our animation. We can just drop it there like this and make it 100 to be at the same level and let's play that there we go so as you can see my animation works perfectly so no real issue here um, and it's this guy here i fixed that kind of error here he kind of loses the <laughs> 
So anyway, so you can see animation is way more stable than playing with physics. So physics is a different ball game for sure. So that's cover the animation aspect. And that's, as you can see, there, there's nothing complicated except if, if you want to stretch your bone, you have to understand that you have to disconnect them. Um, and that's not always easy. So if, if you use IK and Blender, that will be even better. So, but the IK and stuff like that is not exportable from Blender to Unreal. So that's, that's for this part. Okay, so we, we kind of cover most of the basic stuff for our Blender exporting stuff to Unreal Engine, but there's one thing I would like to cover to finish with. It's this component. Uh, it's an add-on for Blender made by, I think it's Unreal Engine, I'm not sure who made those, but it's a public add-on, which you can easily install to your um, to your Blender. So you just download here, so there's two add-ons. So you can go there, and that's, you can download the Unreal Engine to Rigify, that's one thing, but there's the send to Unreal 1.84 at the moment of doing this. So that's the one I want to briefly cover with you. So if you go in Blender uh, to do that, of course, you download the zip file, you go and edit preference, and that's the plugin pipeline. So you activate this plugin pipeline, and you may have noticed this since the beginning of the demo. So I have an extra menu call here, pipeline. And also I have other stuff here uh, with different uh, group, mesh, rig, collision, and extra. So this is all needed to activate connection between Blender and Unreal using this add-on. To make it work, it's actually, it's not a file, so you don't exchange FBX files. So this add-on take care of everything we already show, but in a different way. So what you have to do though is to go and you plug in, and you have to activate two things. The editor scripting utility, make it disenable and the Python editor script plugin. So those two need to be activated. And when this is done, they're going to ask you to restart. So you just restart. And after that, uh, you go in your project setting and you're going to have a new menu under Python remote execution. You have to activate this. So what, what's going to happen is going to bind Blender and Unreal to be able to exchange data. Uh, one thing though, be sure you only have one Unreal Engine and maybe just one Blender, otherwise it kind of may create some conflict. So all this thing works, it's very simple. If you look here, uh, there's a path uh, will be created and they will export some asset there. So it's not really fine, there's a full connection with Unreal Engine, but they will create some asset will appear in our folder here, uh, in our content folder. So let's do this. So in order to make this work, so whoops, you go in Blender, you close this. Okay, so you be sure you have the mesh under the shroom under the mesh and the rig under the rig. So you go like that and you do an export, send to Unreal. There we go. And now if you go back to Unreal, there's a magic must have happened. And if you look, there's a new content folder, untitled category, untitled asset, and all our stuff are there. They even have created an under folder for animation. So as you can see, this is a very efficient way to exchange your uh, content. So you don't have to be, uh, to take care about the export setting and stuff like that. This, this add-on take care of all of that for you. So I really like it. Uh, it doesn't mean you don't need to know what's happening behind the scene with, uh, with the regular export because you're going to face similar stuff that we just showed. But this is a very fast way to, to sync your uh, Blender with your Unreal Engine. So I recommend you guys to, to look at it. I'm going to put the link in the, in the, the, the video to, to download the, this add-on. So that's conclude the world setup. So I hope you, you like it. That was, again, for me, it was more like a bunch of notes for my personal um, needs, but I think uh, I thought maybe some people will be interested to to see that or to watch it. So if you do, just let me know. Just put some comment about stuff I may have missed. But uh, all right, I hope you like it. Thank you.